Hello and welcome to Tats Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. In this video, I'm going to show you the Adobe Camera Raw tools. I'm going to go through all of these tools here on the top left, but there will be more episodes where I'm going to discuss some of them in more details. So let's get started first of all. There's the magnifier and the hand tool. Um, with these ones, you can navigate around the image, but most of the time you can use these from keyboard shortcuts. So for example, even if you have another tool selected, for example, the white uh, balance tool, you can still hold down space to move around and have the hand tool selected temporarily, or you can hold down command or control on PC to have the zoom tool, and by clicking on the image, you can zoom in, or you can also hold down alt uh, to zoom out. So once you are zoomed in closer, you can hold down space and click and then drag to move around the image. So these two tools, the first ones, are not necessarily needed to be selected. You can always use them by uh, using these keyboard shortcuts. And then all of these other tools have also their keyboard shortcuts. So to make it faster to select them, you can memorize these keyboard shortcuts. The white balance tool is I. And with that one, you will have this little eyedropper with which you can click on any part of the image and try to find uh, the balance in the colors. So to get rid of a color shift in the image, an unwanted color shift. In this case, on this image, uh, the best place to click on is probably uh, would be a neutral mid-tone area. So neutral colors are usually the areas where you have white, gray, or black. But the best is to find something which is in the mid-tone range, so closer to a 50% gray. Now in this case, there's a white dress, and on this white dress, probably this area here in the shadow is somewhere close to a 50% gray uh, value. So if I click on here, the uh, white balance tool will try to find um, the adjustment needed to get the colors right. So it will neutralize that 50% gray, and thanks to the neutralization of that color, all the colors will get back to their normal value. So if we zoom out, you can see it's much better already. So it was before something like this, and now again, if I click there, it will again adjust all the colors accordingly. The next tool is called the color sampler tool. With this one, we can place sampling points on the image, and with these, we can check the RGB values. So if you place more of these, I'm going to add another one on the black suit. So with these, we can check whether the colors are neutral enough. Whenever the R, G, and B values are close to each other, that's when you have a close to neutral value. So this is useful whenever you want to check how your color values change on specific points of the image and you can add up to nine color sampling points on one camera raw file and you can also clear these samplers very easily the next tool is very useful that's called the targeted adjustment tool and when you click and hold on to it you can see it has quite a lot of options First of all, let me show you with the parametric curve option. For that, it's good to select the tone curve, and I'm just going to set it back to its default values by selecting this here, and I just select uh, Reset Camera Raw Defaults. So now if I click on the image somewhere with this targeted adjustment tool and drag right and left, I can see the changes on my tone curve. So if I drag right, I will brighten that tonal uh, uh, values, and if I drag left, I can darken it. So in this case, I'm affecting the highlights mainly because I clicked on the sky. If I click on the suit and drag it right and left, that will affect mainly the shadows. So that's a quite useful feature, but what I use the targeted adjustment tool for is mainly the saturation. So instead of the uh, parametric curve, I'm going to select saturation, but again, let me just reset back the values. So I click here on this little drop down and select reset camera raw defaults. Now I switch to saturation, and if I click on a, any color in the image and drag left, it will remove that color from the image. So it's a very easy way to create this uh, interesting effect when you get rid of a specific color in the image, but you keep all the other colors intact. 
We can also click on a green color and then we remove everything apart from the red colors, which will keep all the skin tones plus these poppies in the field. That creates a very interesting effect. And all this happened with the targeted adjustment tool, but here in the HSL grayscale panel, we can see exactly what happened. So in the saturation tab, uh, all the yellows, greens, and blues are reduced to minus 100, and a little bit of the aquas uh, also reduced. So this creates this effect that we can see on the image. So if you compare that with Photoshop, it's a really fast way to uh, separate areas and desaturate them. It's like using an adjustment and a mask together, but here it's automatically doing everything based on the colors represented in the image. So that's a very useful tool. I'm going to switch back again to the default values. Now let's have a look at the crop tool. The crop tool again has some default values here, but before I actually use the crop tool, I would like to show you a tool which is very similar to the crop tool. That's called the straighten tool. With this one, we just simply need to click and drag over an area in the image, which in this case is going to be the horizon, and based on that, it will automatically create the crop. Um, I can always rotate my crop around as well, so I can click close to a corner point, and check these uh, lines the, on the grid and make sure that it's aligned to the horizon, something like that. And then we will have a little bit more of the sky available as well. So now if I press enter, that will accept the crop and we can see that it's straightened. But the good thing about the crop tool is that whenever I select it again, I will see the original crop plus my custom crop. So I can always come back and I can create a much tighter crop to my image as well and move that around, press enter and see how does that look. If I don't like it, I can go back and I can create the previous crop easily. So that's a very useful feature. And by the way, there's an overlay on the crop tool, which gives us the thirds, which helps to align the composition to the rule of thirds. So that's uh, another useful feature. There's a tool called the spot removal tool, which can be used to get rid of spots, which uh, you usually get if you have some dust on your uh, sensor or lens. And uh, this tool is very useful for that, but it can also be used as a um, retouching tool. So if there's something in your image that you want to get rid of, this is the tool that you should use. I'm going to zoom closer to this area here. Let me just go a little bit more closer to it. So as you can see in the background, there's this tower and the electric uh, wires that I would like to get rid of. So in this case, I can just click and uh, create a sampling point, which is the green circle, set it somewhere and then move the red circle closer to the middle and maybe increase its size. Now, uh, the default value or default type of uh, the whole sampling method is heal, but it can be set to clone. So cloning will simply copy and paste all the details that I select. And instead of using this, just simply uh, clicking on the image to create a sample point, we can also draw over it. So if I reduce the size of my um, uh, spot removal tool, I can draw over the area which I would like to get rid of, and then I can very easily set it up the way I want to use it. So I don't want to get more uh, into detail with this, but you can see if I change this probably to heal, in this case, it will do a really nice job. So uh, we can use this for getting rid of some elements, uh, unwanted elements in the image, but we can also use it to get rid of the uh, spots caused by dust in the sensor. And I will come back to the spot removal tool in another episode when I'm going to talk about retouching images in the camera roll. Also, I'm going to uh, mention the next tool, the red eye removal tool in that uh, episode. So I'm not going to even show it in this one. It's a very easy tool to use. Simply, you just need to select the eye if you have the red eye effect uh, visible in the image. The next tool called the adjustment brush is very useful to create local adjustments. So for example, if I want to brighten up a little bit uh, the groom's um, suit, 
I can set up my uh, adjustment brush accordingly so I can increase the shadows and maybe even the exposure a little bit and make my brush smaller so I can go down reduce the size of my brush and then I can start drawing over the suit so that will add more light on the suit so we will see a little bit more detail maybe we can also add a little bit more light on his head so if we zoom back now we can see that it's a nice local adjustment added to the image and the great thing about using the adjustment brush is that whenever that little uh, point is selected we can make adjustments to it later on as well so we can even make it more brighter or reduce the effect a little bit if we feel like it's a bit too much and by turning on and off the preview we can always see a before and after the other tool I already showed in a previous episode of this series, the graduated filter, which is great to add effects in a gradual way, like a gradient. So for example, if I want to add um, effect on the sky to make it a bit darker, I would probably use this tool. So I click there on the top and drag it down. And then you can see if I add a lot, it will mainly affect the top part of the image, but it won't affect this part where the couple is. So that's a really cool feature as well, and it's, it works really well. We can also use a very similar tool called the radio filter if we would like to apply an effect on a specific area of the image. So for example, if we want the couple to be brighter, add some brightness on the couple, we can do that, or we can add uh, extra sharpness there or extra cl clarity on the couple, and then it will only affect that part of the image. So that's also very useful. Let's just have a closer look. I'm just zooming a little bit closer. And let's see before and after. That really made the couple uh, pop with this uh, radio filter. So using these tools only without any adjustments, we already achieved a much better result than the original photo. And there's just a couple of last uh, options here. The preferences dialog box, which you can access from that icon there. And that's something I showed in the previous episode as well. You can access that from bridge and you can rotate the image um, uh, to left and right, but by these arrows, but also you can use the keyboard shortcuts L or R. So that's all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. And if you would like to learn more about the Adobe Camera Raw plugin, make sure you join me next time as well. Thanks a lot for your attention.